really nice sweatshirt that you got in the last week since we've seen each other. Yeah, dude. How have you been? I've been good. I got a Gymshark sponsorship. Sure. <laughs> and they keep giving me clothes that seem to fit someone who's like, I don't know, 5'6", 170. Um, could you please tell me what's the proper way to reverse diet and first maybe just define it for those who may not know what a reverse diet is or when you do it. Right, so the reverse diet is a concept and I, there's different takes on it but I'll give the general impression what I think most people see it to be is what you do after you've competed in a show and your goal is to slowly increase calories um, so to maintain as much leanness as possible. At five grams of carbs per week, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd say the actual stuff that you see out there from the biggest proponents is a little faster than that. Um, but oh, really? I don't, I don't know if we'll get into what, what my thoughts are on it. But what the thoughts are is that you slowly increase calories so that you don't put on too much body fat, you don't fat overshoot, and then you can get your calories up nice and high while still being relatively lean, and you can make great gains in the off season, diet on more calories next time by building metabolic capacity. Well, that's really forward thinking. Yeah, but here's the problem. Uh, the reality is, is after you've dieted for that long, both physiologically and psychologically, you are in a really difficult position because you don't have a show holding you handcuffed. You are in a, you're incredibly hungry and food focused and trying to adhere to a very rigid, slow diet where for part of it you're actually still in deficit <laughs> is going to set you up to binge. And I think when I tried to use this approach in the past, um, I had an extremely low success rate. Most of my athletes just lost their minds. Um, and then they felt bad about it. So then it would be this binge, purge, binge, purge, and, and they felt like, oh, I had all this, this focus and drive when I, was, when I was dieting, and now it's gone. And they felt like they were weak, you know? And it's really, I want to apologize to people I did that with, because I feel like I set them up for failure, you know? It takes be, a lot of maturity to say that. How about that? And to wear very tight shirts. So um, anyway, um, the, the research, when you really look at it, yes, there's metabolic adaptation when you diet, yes, your energy expenditure goes down, yes, it's common to see fat overshoot after someone gets very lean. However, the best way to get someone back in a position where they're eating more calories, they don't have those psychological downsides and food focus, and they're not on the risk of, on the edge of an eating disorder, is to gain fat, really? to gain body fat. And when you really think about it, there is no reason to have an ass that looks like a rib cage unless you're going to get on stage. There's no reason. <laughs> Your wife doesn't think it looks good. No girl thinks it looks good. The gaunt in the face. They're like, hey, do you lift and do you have AIDS? <laughs> I mean, like, it, you really look, you look like you're sick when you're ready to get on stage. You look great, you know, in tanner and all that, but that's not a healthy position to be in psychologically or physically, and you don't want to be there. It's not good for, for gaining muscle. It's not good for being sane, it's not good for integrating the sport in your life. So the recovery diet, in my opinion, should be immediately you get out of a deficit. Immediately. And you get yourself into a surplus and you have the purpose of getting to like the low end of your settling point. So for example, let's say you walk around, if you just kind of habitually ate and just trained between say 10 to 15 percent body fat. So the goal would be to get around like 9 or 10 percent body fat relatively quickly. We're Halfway. talking like two to three weeks. Whoa. So, put so you in like from a, like five-ish, four, five, right. six-ish percent. So here's what it might look like. You finish your show, I say, enjoy yourself Saturday night, don't go crazy, if you don't throw up, you know what I'm saying? And then Sunday, I want you to eat like an adult. I want you to have three square meals, enjoy your food, just do your thing. The day after that, I want you to go up six, seven hundred, hundred, eight hundred calories per day, you know, so you're in a surplus. And we would gain weight, purposely, to gain fat, to get you sane, to get your, actually recover your metabolic rate, for three, for three weeks or so, maybe up to six weeks, and then, once we got you to an athletically lean position, not like trying to maintain shredded, that's the point where we'd bring calories down to a slow, then, then we'd do the reverse diet. Then we'd be making five, 10, 15 gram carb increases. Once you're back to a, a position where you can actually put on muscle mass, you can actually think about your girlfriend and decides what is she bringing me for dinner, you know? Holy that shit, that's actually all I think about. Anyway. I know, right? It's more like, have you made the salads yet? Right, because, you get to a point where, you know, libido is tanked, your sleep is messed up, uh, you're food focused, uh, your, your anxiety levels are high, your mood is all over the place, and you want to try to get rid of all of that so you can get back to the process of putting on muscle, enjoying lifting weights, and having a goal besides trying to be shredded, which you just spent six months trying to do. So get some goals related to performance in the gym, you know, and try to integrate bodybuilding into a, into a lifestyle that's healthy. And you also are trying to recover 
the rigidity. So you might be trying to hit macros within plus or, five minus, plus or minus five grams on a day-to-day -day basis. You might get to the point where it's like calories and protein. And then eventually just body weight and protein, you know, making sure you're gaining at a right rate. So you, you want to try to get closer to normal faster. But still acknowledging that the, in the immediate phase, you want to be relatively rigid and kind of reverse that. I have, a, I have a question. I have an answer. So let's say, guys, let's say I lean down and I get to 160 pounds, uh, lowest weigh in, and then, you know, I carve up, get on stage, have a lot of fun, reverse dieting starts. Where uh, am I going to land? Recovery dieting starts. Recovery dieting. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, so, like, one week after my show, where should I be now? Two weeks after my show, three weeks after my show, but I was at 160 at my lowest. So where so should I be? I would like to see you within week. like three or four days, about 164, 165. So in three or four days, really? Cause, cause, I mean, you're going to have a big meal after the show. You're going to be in a big surplus on Sunday, and it's going to be a lot of water and glycogen, but you're out of a deficit. And then if you're eating, let's say in your case, let's say a 700 calorie surplus, Per day, you're gaining like, yeah. like a pound and a half. So in three weeks, you'd be up, you know, five six pounds plus that five pounds you already were. So in three or four weeks, you're at 170. So in three or four weeks, up, even up to, like for you're me, 10 pounds over stage. Not for weight. you, maybe necessarily, but for me, 10 you're pounds, 10 pounds, over, pounds stage over stage weight. weight. And at that point, then we'd start slowing things down. So put it all. Yeah, it's the same. Something more like trying to gain 0.5 to 1 percent of your body weight per month from there. But of course, a lot of this depends on you know what you're what you're feeling, and what you're telling me. Like if you still feel like shit at 170. I could chip to 172, 173. Oh, okay. What if I felt incredible at just like 165? If you really did feel incredible. Which I don't, actually, that's not going to happen. I don't, yeah. Because I'm at 170 on the way down, I feel like shit. Typically 165 not, is I don't feel like shit, I just can't, crack just can't up get and, it up anyways. It's like, that's what I'm typically where you like stick on the diet, so I doubt that'd be where you felt good on the way up. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, so, yeah. So anyway, if, if someone feels great a little early, and so, so long as they are, they, they're looking at their girlfriend the way they should. What if they're everything is great focused. except they can't get it up? Then keep going. And you keep gaining weight. You need to be recovered. I mean, if you think about it, if you can't even get it up, is that a great position to be in for gaining muscle? What if you don't want it to get up? Then maybe you should talk to a <laughs> sexual behavior specialist or consider a different relationship. What if it gets up? I don't even know what I'm asking at this point, but... It gets up, but then you want it to be down. <laughs> What if you are so focused on like other things, right? Because of the prep, right? That you don't even care about getting it up. You're just like, do we need to talk off camera? <laughs> no, no. <I'm> not. <laughs> I, I would say it's very important to keep perspective during prep, and that if your prep is taking, if bodybuilding is taking away from your life and damaging your relationship with the person you care about. That's not true. That's not that's not healthy bodybuilding, in my opinion. It should be something that enhances your life. So, I mean, a great example. Yeah, libido goes down during prep. It just happens. So maybe you're not as physically intimate as you were with your significant other. You can buy them flowers. You can get them a card. You can show them you love them in other ways, so that they don't wonder what's happening. And you can explain to them, hey, this is a normal physiological response to dieting. My hormone levels are going to go out of whack when I'm starving. Reproduction is not something that makes sense. Like, how are you going to feed your kids if you can't even feed yourself? Let's not do that. That's a normal biological response. But once you start putting on body fat and recovery diet, gaining weight, all that stuff, then the um, the consensual merging of two loving partners <laughs> should occur. <laughs> Shit, this is like my my psychiatrist right now. It's crazy. Psychologist, I can't I can't write prescriptions. <laughs> okay, but I'm not so, not a psychologist. Neither one of those is true. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of some more uh, questions related to related to the recovery diet. recovery diet. A lot of it should be based around how you're feeling. You know, like I, I can tell you, we want to get up to being you know 10% over stage weight when you're you know no more than two months post show. But the reality is, is if you feel like crap there, or if you feel great a little earlier than that, it's going to be different. It's going to look different based on the athlete. But I think so long as you understand that the goal is to gain fat post show to get healthy again, but not too much fat. Because really, you just want to avoid the the fat overshoot and the binge eating that, that yeah. drives people crazy. That, that's bad too, you know? And the reverse diet, the original was just, it was a better step than that, but it's just not realistic. Yeah, so we're, we're like, in terms of body fat percentage, where do you like to get most males up within three or four weeks up to? Probably around eight to nine to 10 percent. If, if assuming they were actually at like a legit five percent on stage or six or whatever it was, but looking still looking athletic, still looking good, 
someone might think, hey, are you like six weeks to ten weeks out, that kind of thing, and then still and putting on fat slowly. After that. And I think lastly, what's your suggestions for everyone who constantly asks you, how do I stay lean after my show? Because people like want to hold on to that leanness of let's just say six percent, seven percent. You need to learn how to love your off-season body. Really, that's the reality of it. You really do, and I mean, that's this is bodybuilding. The, the goal is to put on muscle, and where you're gonna make muscle mass gains is not when you're looking like a Holocaust victim had access to a weight set, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to be able to, Damn. you need to be able to, to The only be, guy that can joke about it and it's actually cool. I don't, I, I don't know if that was cool. I hope I didn't offend anyone with the Holocaust. Okay, never mind, anyway, take that back. Yeah, we might just edit that out or leave it in so that you know that we care. But anyway, I think you wanna have your hormones recovered or you're not gonna be able to effectively gain muscle mass. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Revert? Recovery. So there's no more re reverse dieting. I think... Well, unfortunately there probably will be, but I would suggest taking what I we call a 3D muscle journey, the recovery diet approach. So this is... Guys, uh, this is different. This is different from what was sort of mainstream. It's not mainstream-ish. Well, kind of mainstream in the macros yeah, world, I guess you could say. I, it I, seems kind of mainstream -ish. I do want to give some credit. Like some of the reverse dieting approaches are, hey, Cut your cardio in half, increase your fat and carb by 10 to 20 percent, um, and and that's you know it, I, I do think it's unnecessarily long, and I do think it is a better option than say just binge eating and your only plan is 15 restaurants you know, uh, and then you know getting 50 pounds over over stage weight in a month. But um, I just think it's, it's it's about improving. It's about always getting better. So I think this is a better option. It makes more sense physiologically. It makes more sense psychologically. It, yeah, it's just like, yeah, Did I blow your mind? Like growing up a little bit, like, yeah. you just kind of have to grow up. Yeah, and that take, it takes time, I'm not expecting someone to do this perfect. And it's hard. Time out. It is hard. It is Body hard. Bodybuilding's not easy. But it gets easier over time. It does. Doesn't it? Like, if you want to watch some of, like, Jeff Albert's vlogs on our channel, that's a great example of someone who's really figured this out, who is integrated into his life, and I think he's... Personally, I think he's one of the best in the planet because he does this, those soft skills that a lot of other athletes overlook. That's where experience comes in and lots of competitions and season. Uh, yep. And thinking and always reevaluating. You know, and thinking, how could I improve? You know, like the champions, like, you know, Brian Whitaker. He is so humble, he will ask advice from anyone he thinks he can learn from. He doesn't put himself on this pedestal. Same thing with Jeff. Like, the, the best pros, in my opinion, the ones we should be looking up to are the ones who always in a state of learning. Very Who are some really good pros, just throw some out there. Thank you. Brian Whitaker Brian. is a great example. He's currently the ISPA and WBF world champion. You know, Philip Ricardo Jr. is a classic example of a great pro. You know, I'd say Jeff Alberts, you know, he won the KC International and um, got to throw, throw some love to Alberto Nunez, who places, you know, in the top half and at his age is pretty impressive. I'm obviously biased towards the 3D MJ team, but there, there's a lot of good pros out there, some up-and-comers in CA. Jason Genova. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And Sima Inyang, very young guy, placed fifth in the, in the heavies at WBF Worlds, and he's super young and very impressive physique. A lot of good up-and-comers. Cool. So I think that covers uh, recovery dieting pretty well. I, I think so. Yeah. And we're going to make a video on this with all the 3DMJ coaches talking about it pretty soon. It'll be released maybe in a month or two. Cool. That's good. Uh, guys, I think that covers it for this video. I'm going to give him a hug real quick. My brother. Uh, Guys, doing this, good, is, man. this is Eric Helms over here. He's filling out my shirt pretty well. I'm gonna stretch. He's doing a pretty good job. Thank you for joining us, guys. We really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, Eric does. We all do. And all the links to find Eric are in the description box. All the links for 3D Muscle Journey is in the description box. Uh, definitely check them out. I'm sure you guys already know who they are and follow them and everything. So. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. We'll see you next video. And peace out. Cool. Yeah. Good job. Good finish. Good. Those are good topics. Good. It's been too long. So you just want to you just want to switch shirts. You're good with that. Right? Switch back. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is that good? That was really good. Awesome. Sorry, that was kind of long. No, it's all good. I think that was a that was an important topic to spend time on. Yeah, that was good. Hour. Hour. Hour, hour 15, hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs>
Sounds good. Oh. Matt, I appreciate it.